Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Living Faith, Full Gospel Baptist Church. I'm Elder Renee Moore. This is Pastor Clee Ernest Moore. We welcome you to our home and to our worship service for Sunday, November the 27th, 2022. We're almost to the end of 2022. We're going to open this morning with scripture from the book of Isaiah. Scripture from the book of Isaiah, chapter 55. If you'd like to read along with me, I'll be in the New King James Version of Isaiah 55, a familiar scripture to many of us, starting at verse 6. Isaiah 55 and 6, and the word of the Lord says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his ways and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy on him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Oh, blessed be the word and the hearers and the doers of his word going to sing this morning we're getting close to as we are in the holiday season the word of the lord tells us that he is faithful to do what he says and there's we're going to sing about his faithfulness this morning if you know we're going to do two of them if you know it sing along with me great is your faithfulness great is your faithfulness Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, your hand has provided. Great is your faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Do that one more time. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, your hand has provided. Great is your faithfulness, Lord, unto me. And because he's faithful, we should be like he is. So we sing to each other. Oh, come all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, born the king of angels. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Amen and amen. Our prayer this morning, we're going to pray together, church, and we want to thank our dear sister, Alexandra Landing, for sharing this beautiful prayer with us, and we're going to pray it over you right now. Heavenly Father, thank you for being God. Thank you for grace and mercy and being the God of another chance. Lord, forgive us of our shortcomings and for not being who you called us to be. Guide and teach us in the way we should go. 
Allow people to see you and not us. Lord, we give ourselves to you to continue to work your plan. Lord, we've been stressed, stretched, and pulled in certain situations that have taught our faith in you to grow. We are stronger because of what we have endured, but humble because you walk with us. As we prepare for 2023, remove all things that are not like you. Remove illness and disease, low self-esteem, grief, depression, and self-pity. We know in you there is victory and those things have no place. Bless all of those who are hearing this and every relationship we represent. May we be healed, healthy and at peace. Allow us to have strength and courage to face the obstacles in front of us. Let us know you are beside us. Cover us with the peace of your blood, the power of your hand and the vision of being focused on you. I speak victory over our lives and I expect you to daily blow our mind. Lord, we are your children and with you, everything is possible. Bless us beyond what we can see or comprehend. Allow us to see your glory. I ask all these and all things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Landing, and thank you for joining us in our worship this morning. Three quick announcements for Living Faith, and then we're going to hear from Pastor Moore. First, we want to thank you all for making our 18th church anniversary a huge success. We had a glorious time in the Lord last Sunday at Living Faith. Uh, there was such an outpouring of love for us, for the church, for each other, and that just warmed our hearts. Uh, so many of our young people came back to visit us. It was just a glorious time. So we thank you for a wonderful church anniversary. Bible study this Wednesday at six o'clock online for those of you who want to join us on our journey through the Bible. This week we'll be in the book of Deuteronomy. So we enjoy We encourage you to join us for that. And first Sunday, we will be in the building for communion, our last communion service of 2022, first Sunday in December at our building on First Street in Cleveland, Mississippi. And now we're going to hear from Pastor Moore. Let us all do what we should. Let us all do what we should do each and every day, whether the church service or not. Let us praise God. Praise the Lord. And to cheer now, all of you cheering of God, I say uh, good morning. I pray that wherever you are uh, this morning, that you that you are well, and you and that God is uh, uh, blessing you according to your uh, your request. This morning, I want you to uh, we're going to talk briefly uh, about. It all starts with God. Don't give up on him. It all starts with God. Don't give up on him. And there are certain verses that I always go back to. And there's a reason for that. There's a good reason because there's a lot of uh, 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 material, learning material, and blessings within these uh, these verses. Romans twelve and two. Turn to Romans twelve and two. Let's say Amen. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Let us say amen. Let's say amen. I was uh, in a very refreshing and a very uh, uh, conversation yesterday with, uh, with my uh, Pastor's sister, 
And uh, then I got blessed with uh, reading Sojourner's Truth, uh, which is a magazine that I subscribe to from a young sister who uh, uh, 25 years old now. I'm trying to get her age right. She lives in Uganda. Her name is Vanessa. Uh, her, her first name is Vanessa. She's widely known now uh, within the uh, people who are fighting for to improve the environment. I brought her up to say it all starts with God and don't give up on him. Uh, she was asked, she was asked to, uh, she went to one of the uh, world's uh, uh, convention whenever, you know, every so often, well, no, every year now, at least 20 to 30 or whatever nation get together and they discuss about climate change. And they also talk about the have to, and they also make commitment as to how much money they are going to uh, contribute to help other countries who, uh, who, who uh, especially third world countries, uh, uh, would you know contribute money to help improve our things that are related to climate change? And I mentioned this. I got um, just hang here with me, and I'm gonna bring you, uh, let you understand what it is I'm trying to say. Uh, nobody knew about her. So four young people from uh, 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 four different. Uh, European country asked her to stand in the picture with them as they, as the American, uh, not American, the Associated uh, Press, I believe, they global, they global uh, magazine, they're part of, you know, they large magazine worldwide. Well, they asked her to uh, stand in the picture. So she was happy to stand in the picture. But when she got a copy of the, uh, of the magazine, they had cropped her out. She was the only black person. And she was the only person ever representing Africa. Well, she wasn't the only one from Africa, but she was representing Africa. They cropped her out of the picture on purpose. She was upset. Now she, that's really not brought up her age. She's 25 years old. She got angry at first. And then she said something. That's really not kept reading the article. She said it was the work of the Holy Spirit. It was the work of the Holy Spirit. Because what happened was is that they didn't realize that they stirred up a seed that the her uh, that the Holy Spirit had taught uh, that the Holy Spirit will, you know, the Holy Spirit working with her. And they stirred up a seed that they didn't realize. What they did was they created somebody now, they tried to be rid of her, they couldn't. She is known internationally now. And she's only 25 years of age. And she talks about how the Holy Spirit works. And I'm bringing that up also again this morning. I think too many of us forget that everything in our life starts with God. That's when I was so excited and I didn't, you know, to hear uh, one of our elders who had to uh, move to uh, uh, Memphis because to get a job. He's a teacher, but there's a, uh, a certain, uh, what is it, putting you on there. Uh, if you don't teach things to the kids the way they want it, they put you on, I call it blacklist. But make a long story short, he is teaching in Memphis. He's doing a great job. But he was also the elder at our church, we, which is he, if I, no doubt about it, he is on, uh, uh, listen to uh, me right now. And he listen, and he's wishing with, with us. And he does it every Sunday. Like a lot of young people who are not in his area, they still part of our virtual church. But he... It's like I listened to him close, and when I listened, when I read this article from this young lady, I realized how the two of them thinks alike. Now, how could this happen 
with a young lady in Uganda who she and I have never met her. I have never uh, met her, but they thanks a lot when it comes to talking about the gospel. Then I'm, the, the Holy Spirit, right after I talked to the pastor and sister, I happened to just run into an article that set my soul on fire. And what I found out is they were talking about the, the, there's a decline in the United States among Christians. But what, did, but what I read was, I kept reading, and for a minute I was said, oh, you know, I, I fell a little low. But I kept on reading, and this is called a peer report. But they say, but there is an explosion of people who are, uh, who are converting to Christianity in Africa, in Asia, in South America, and, and I looked at the pattern. I said, these are minorities. These are the people that a certain individual talked about real bad. But see, they, they don't have the riches, rich, have all these riches uh, that the United States have, but they got Jesus, and that's enough. And you see, this young lady is part of that movement. And she talks about the relationship between uh, fighting for women's rights, how fighting for economic rights, how to talk about all the rights. She said that uh, Christianity is unconnected. And I wrote myself a note and I asked myself, uh, uh, I can't find my note, but I remember what I wrote, is uh, we as a black church, why are we hanging on to I'm not trying to be uh, uh, chauvinist, but why are we hanging on to? No, I, I'm finna use a dress tail. I'm gonna use a coat tail. Why are we holding on to the, the coat tails of churches who are, who, in my opinion, uh, don't want to? They are in name only. We have many, many churches out there who have a a bad reputation of abusing, and it ain't just the Catholic, abusing young folks, abusing women. Why is this happening in a church? Stay with me, y'all. It all starts with God. And we're approaching 2023. 20, Starting means beginning. Then you got to accept the direction you want to head. You want you got to accept the direction that you want to head. Hopefully, you're heading in the direction, a new direction as a church than what we have just seen recently. I hope that's what's going on. It all starts with God. You have to. We can. We we we, we as we prepare uh, for two, 2023, remove all things as 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 our minister uh, said in the prayer this morning. Let us remove all things that are not like God. I'm reinterpreting, but she said like you. But she was talking about that the, uh, uh, God. If it's not like God, let us remove our illness. And disease. And I got to thinking on that. I remember my grandma, that been years ago. You see, I try to teach young folks this and they don't want to listen. That's the reason we're having problems. But I'm going to tell you some other problems. We wasn't allowed to go to the doctor where I was living on, on, on this plantation. I won't call the plantation name for legal reason, but it, the, the error still exists. We could not go to the doctor unless we got permission from the so-called boss man. If the boss man didn't say it was okay, you could not go to the doctor. So what did you do? My grandmama and my, uh, and my uh, older people, they came up with these remedies. 
that is what people see when we think of climate change and environment change we take things like l uh uh random was talking about last Sunday. we just take things from faith value god have given us christian what we need to even render some of the diseases that we have a lot of the diseases that we buy i mean a lot of the medicine that we buy from cvs and from walgreens and some of the other pharmacies and whatever they are made from the same substance that our older people used to use and we laugh at it now they are making millions and millions and millions of dollars think about the sister who was in the hospital and they took her i remember i forgot the uh the detail black woman they took part of her sales and i forgot what they used it for yeah cancer research they took it without her permission and they have made billions and billions and billions they found something in her blood that is curing a lot of people who have cancer and to this day her family have not received a penny not one penny so it's all star with god we have to allow the holy spirit to stir up that seed that is in us vanessa didn't even if you read her article it's a beautiful article she didn't even realize God greatness until he until that happened to her. But we shouldn't have to wait until we get angry. Because they are people, they are going to do what they want to do as long as it keeps them in power. We think that the way that we run churches, that's the reason I'm glad I'm in the uh uh full gospel fellowship. Because I'm being, I'm, I've been talking to uh, uh, just several, not a whole bunch of individuals, especially uh, our new uh, uh, state uh, director, who is he not uh, our uh, state bishop yet. But there are several things that he has said to me in the past. I didn't pay much attention to it, but these, but they began to see that. They open their eyes to the power of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit teaches us. The, the Holy Spirit motivates us. And what we keep forgetting, and I was sitting there studying last night, oh, help me, Jesus, because I, I, uh, I, I'm trying to keep my message within an organized and a system, but, you know, I, and I can easily lose it. But when it came, while I was studying, it, something said to me, uh, uh, Pastor Moore, the Holy Spirit was here when the earth was first created. The Holy Spirit is not something new. It is not a fad. It's not a new piece of clothing that you can put on. The Holy Spirit was there long with, with, during the time that the earth was being created. So when we was when we was being created, Holy Spirit was present and had a hand in doing it. And the moment that we accept Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit began to do his thing. We must realize that nothing and no one except God has the power to complete me or you as a person. Uh, Psalms 73 and 26 says, read like this, my flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion. He is part of our whole. Note this morning, we are not complete without him. I'm encouraging you like our elder did uh, last Sunday. Start your, uh, start your uh, whether you want to call it rebuilding, whether you want to call it replacing, whether you want to call it uh, restoration, 
or whether you want to call it or whatever, what's important that you keep God in the center of what, what you're trying to do with your life. That's what I'm doing. I uh, have a, a problem, medical problem, and it was suggested to me, uh, if you can see me, why don't you read healing scriptures? Just take a moment in your day and just read healing scriptures. And if you read them long enough, they become part of you. That seed in you will get stirred up. And I agree. I agree. And I will. At the beginning of any journey, this part of my new journey, we must set out in the right direction to reach our destination. That is why the, that, that is why the Bible begins with God's uh, wonderful purpose for bringing you and I into this world. And I want to say this too, and I read it from somewhere else, and I agree with him, is that it's not about me and you either. Each and whatever, each and every one of us have a particular assignment. Pray to God and ask him what your assignment is. Ask. Someone texts me and said, I'm going through some things. I offered to the help. They didn't want no help. They say, I'm going through some things emotionally, spiritually, and, you know, they went through the thing. And I said, well, you can always turn to me. No, I'm going to do this by myself. You can't do that by yourself. If you're a Christian, you cannot. You cannot. I'm going to say it again. You cannot, whatever it is that you're going through, you cannot go by yourself. First of all, because you don't own yourself. God owns you. They don't own me. Oh, yes, they do. Tell me what process you use to bring yourself into this world. Well, my mama, that, tell me again. Because we want to want to get technical. Well, what process other than what you're thinking about uh, started to pro started you on your journey towards this earth? And ask yourself this morning, why did it take nine months for you to get here? And you say you're the most intelligent, the most sophisticated, the most whatever, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, we consider ourselves being supreme being. Are, are we really? Look what we're doing. Look how we messed up. We started messing up in the Garden of Eden. We won't get in that this morning. Oh, Lord, I'm looking forward to talking about God and the, be, uh, our uh, being intimate with God and his highest priority for our lives. And then to determine the impact for our lives. I'm really looking forward to that. The scripture said, then God say, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let me say that again. You hear what I just said then? And I'm closing with this because I, I get off track if I haven't already. I was told about a situation in church yesterday. Now, I can talk about this and not call a name. I couldn't make it. But people, it was a funeral. Communion table. I remember um, raised outside of Hollandale. The one thing that I know. See, that, that, let, me, let me back up. See, there are certain things that we do not consider sacred. Not in our lives. Uh, unless it's our tennis shoes, or our clothes, or our car. But when it comes to God, we don't consider that sacred. We don't set that aside. We don't even consider, I don't care if the church is nothing but a tent that you don't bought from Walmart and you wish them in it, that once you dedicate it to God, it becomes sacred. Even if that tent get blown down by a storm, it still was God's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's your job to go and fix that one or get another. Yeah. 
and dedicate it again. Okay. But well, here's the situation that broke my heart. I thought about it. It really broke my heart. People, they had to communicate when it was uh, to make room, you know, for the coffin. Apparently, the church wasn't a huge church. And to sit the communion table out of the way, uh, that's understandable. But it should have been set in a way that nobody should should be a known fact that you don't touch the communion table. And people was allowing their children to sit on the communion for a seat. They're allowing their children to sit on the communion table. And some of them actually, I was told, sit with their backs to the wall with their foot up on the communion table. Were you making a big deal out of nothing? No. That's the problem. That is the problem. Mm -hmm. We don't see the value in things that we don't see the value. We had started and I never did get a chance to, to do what I wanted to do with teaching on Nehemiah. We don't see the value in building that wall. See, God looked down the road, long distance, and I already got things planned for you, a plan for your people. Sometimes we don't make it to where he want us, want, uh, want, want, want our people to go or want you, you don't make it there. You be part of the journey. But that wall is still there. And there's a reason for it. Everything starts with God. And my message to you out there, people who are, you're having some difficult times right now and you know what they are. Don't give up on God. And in closing the day, we had a wonderful time. And one of the people that uh, I want to, uh, I don't know this sister uh, full name, but uh, I want to uh, say thank you, bless you. I'm saying this in the name of God. The sister who found time to make sure that these people who are going through these difficult times for Thanksgiving, she not only brought them dinners, yeah. she brought them food that they can use for later on. Yeah. I think uh, her name is uh, Sister Pam Chapman. Yeah. Now, I don't know who else blessed her for what she's doing. And from what I heard, she's not doing this because she's trying to get a reputation. Yeah. She's a business lady. And God wants to pay it forward. It all started with God. It all starts with God. So I pray that you have a, you enjoyed your Thanksgiving. I did. I had people who uh, uh, bless me and my uh, wife, Ella Moore, and got tons and tons of texts and stuff. And the truth is, the texts were worth just as much as them, them that, 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 that turkey I ate. I'm not saying turkey wasn't good, but it's just the idea that someone take their time and think about me and my wife. So y'all be blessed and y'all continue to be blessed. And I, y'all, uh, once you say with me what I said to me in the beginning, let us yeah. praise God. Praise. And let us say amen. Yeah.